a uh, roller coaster tycoon white star modified mpu and driver board <clears throat> came to me non-booting well the cpu wouldn't boot the display would come up and uh, that's what we call a splash screen it'll boot with the ROM revision for the DMD controller, which is right here, and this is one of mine. <clears throat> but the CPU itself will not boot. Typically, that's caused by a failure of U201, a 74HCT273. So I removed that one right away and replaced it with one of my NOS stocks. But then, as I booted the game, I it's, well, it still wouldn't boot, and the problem turned out to be a failed NVRAM module from one of the very popular vendors. I don't know how that could happen. And U213, the <clears throat> PAL programmable array logic, had failed also. So <clears throat> I have replaced the power input header, that 6-pin header. And on the driver board, I replaced the 15-pin power output header and the GI header see the GI are operating just fine right there. So this will be my first time putting it into test. Let's see what happens. Switch test. And I haven't updated this bench to use any of Victor's stuff. So I'm still using my old Penny tech Penny tech tester, which has been quite reliable. And I, <clears throat> I didn't get a response there on a couple of switches. I know all the rows are working. Five seems to be in off. Let's try a 77 again. That's weird. Column five. I'll have to see what's going on with that with uh, Roller Coaster Tycoon. Make sure it's not one of my, <clears throat> not a problem with my test equipment too, but so far, column five. And there was some. Some work done to this CPU board. It's pretty heinous, but uh, I was trying to uh, see if it would be okay. Maybe not. <clears throat> Let's see. I've rearranged my switch panel. This used to be down here underneath where my solenoid drive test thing is, so I'm having a little bit of trouble getting used to that. Let's cycle some coils. Again, I designed this test panel so that the relative location of each of these LEDs matches the location of the drive FET or transistor on the board. <clears throat> And the order in which these are fired is entirely up to the software. I've done it a million times, so I can kind of tell the way it fires. Some of them go out of, uh, or di they go in a different order, I'll say. It always starts here, goes to here, then here, then here. So those are all working correctly. homemade 10 by 8 lamp matrix tester and that's working correctly. The flashers, those are a rehash of some of the solenoid drive circuitry. Those are all working correctly. Got past another knocker. Oh, what a mess! Attaboy! Congratulations! 
course, this version of the board does not have the BSMT 2000. It's got all of that circuitry is replaced with this CPLD, an Atmel microprocessor, RISC processor, and a flash memory. All of this stuff is replaceable still. I mean, it's very fine pitch. You'd have to be very good with uh, your rework tools to replace those things. The problem is diagnosing it. And I have a JTAG um, port device, which I haven't connected yet or fiddled around with. So you can theoretically determine the health of the CPLD at least. And uh, we'd have to figure out something else for seeing if the Atmel microprocessor is running. <clears throat> but that's something for another day. So let's see. Let me go back to switch test. And run through those rows or the columns again. So column five in op. Column seven seems to work. Except switch seventy seven, and I don't I don't understand that. Okay, column five in op. Let me get after that. So I have replaced the two N thirty nine oh four and made some uh jumpers on the back. It's a lot cleaner than it used to look, but still, it's never going to be a beauty queen because somebody had torn all three through holes for the 2N3904 out, and one of the through holes, uh, let's see, makes with the center layer of copper on this three-layer board to ground, so I had to pick up ground from one of the other 2N3904s, but it looks like we've got it all working now. I'll go across row one, or all the columns in row one, and, and this was the, <clears throat> it was column five that was inoperative. Uh, I did find out that column, or switch 77, was, um, on uh, Roller Coaster Tycoon is not used. Interesting that 64, I'm sorry, I'm, I keep saying 77. Why am I saying that? 55, that's because my penny tech tester here is numbered differently from uh, the way that Sega and Stern numbered them. So column eight, row eight, works perfectly fine and it's unused. So is column eight, row seven, but switch in column seven, row seven, which is unused per the manual, is not reported. So I don't consider this to be a problem other than the software engineers at Sega and Stern should have been consistent. And what I really would have preferred that they had done is for all switches, used or unused, they should have reported the switch closure. Well, enough bitching for a Monday morning. The board is now good to go, recapping. I've installed a new NVRAM module. I tested the uh, ROM and it is perfectly fine. And I replaced U213 and I've replaced the 74HCT273 at U201 on the driver board. The only thing that was necessary was a couple of headers up here. So she's good to go. Oh, I replaced this header also. And one thing that I do frequently is if it's in tight working spaces and it's it would make it the job easier if I removed a header, I do that too. That header was uh, it was fine, but cosmetically it had a solder iron burn on it from the prior rework done to the board. Thank you so much, Roller Coaster Tycoon. I don't see that one that often. It's kind of a cool game though.